So you've heard there's this really cool comet up in the sky, and you would love to try and take pictures of it or even just see it with your scope. But you don't know how to find it. When is it up above the horizon where you live? And where do you look? What direction do you look in? Well, most of the apps that we use for planning night sky photography, like PhotoPills or Planet Pro, are probably not going to have the comet in it, unless it gets to be a really big one like Neowise was, um, or Leonard, then it might show up in Planet Pro. But we can find it by using Stellarium. Just like if you right now are interested in photographing C22 E3 ZTF, um, this is a comet at the start of 2023 that is supposed to be turning into a visible eye comet, which is really cool. Um, this is uh, the APOD on January 9th, 2023, just showing you a pretty cool comet to photograph. But how do we find it? So we're going to open up Stellarium and it's the software that will let us bring in the comet and show us exactly where it's at. Very, very quickly, you want to make sure that you have your location set. So you'll see my location is here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Make sure your location is set correctly or this will not show you the right time. Uh, and you also want to make sure that you are controlling your date and time. So I'm actually gonna pop this forward to the 14th. We've got a little bit of moon interference until that with the uh, comet that I'm going to be bringing in today, which is C22E3ZTF. Now, the steps I'm about to show you to bring in the comet to Stellarium, because Stellarium, this version of Stellarium existed prior to the comet being found. So Stellarium doesn't know it exists. Um, we have to tell Stellarium, hey, this comet exists. But the steps I'm about to show you are for this specific comet you can use it for any other one. So if you're watching this video sometime in the future and it's a different comet that you're looking for, you can use the exact same steps. You just have to know the name of the comet. So our first step to bring it in is to go to our configuration window. That will be F2 as a keyboard shortcut. When we open up the configuration window at the top along our options, we want to come over to where it says plugins. From plugins, go to the solar system editor in the left hand side with all of your options. And then we are going to configure. So let's configure this. Inside of the configuration, we are going to go to solar system and we want to import orbital elements in MPC format. This is basically saying, hey, bring what we need in. Now we are looking for a comet. So let's click on the comet. And we're going to download a list of objects from the internet. Isn't the internet so helpful? I use the MPC, List of Observable Comets. You can try the other ones if this one doesn't work, but uh, for all of the comments I've brought in, it has worked for me. Then all that we need to do is click Get Orbital Elements. It's going to now show you, okay, here's the stuff you can bring in. You could select everything. You just click Mark All. But we don't need to do that. We don't need everything. We only need our specific comment. So let's type it in. So C slash 2022. And look, here it is, E3 ZTF. Now, if it doesn't show up right away, keep typing it and you'll see it show up. If you don't find it here, back out and use a different list and look for it again. So I'm going to click the check mark beside it and click Add Objects. This now has imported this comment in. So at this point, I can say, see you later. Don't need all of you anymore. Close the, all of these out. Now I can come in and search for it. Now, slight problem is that uh, is daytime. So let's just come to nighttime. And the other thing is I know the comet is going to be in the north slash northeast, so I'm going to move myself around. If you don't have your cardinal points up, you can get those in your menu down here. But it's just going to make my life a little bit easier to be pointed in the general right direction um, so that I can find the comet more easily. So now I can search for it. Let's go over to our search window. That's F3. And let's start typing it in. C slash 2022. Oh, look at that. It's the only one that I have. So when the comment that you want is bolded, as soon as it is bolded, you can click enter or return on your keyboard and it will take you to it. Now it 
doesn't look like it did anything for me. That's because it is still underground. If you look at my information on the left hand side, I have this customized just to show the magnitude and the azimuth and altitude. This altitude is a dead giveaway. It says that the comet is currently at uh, 7.48 degrees azimuth and minus three <laughs> degrees altitude. So we've got to bring it up and look at that. I went forward by one hour and it's just coming and popping up over the horizon. So now I can move forward in time. And I like to watch the altitude because here living in Nova Scotia, I photograph over the ocean a lot. I don't need my objects to get that high up before I can start shooting them. And I personally like to photograph objects in conjunction with a landscape. So I really want to know what is the azimuth, the direction I need to point in to capture that object just as it's coming up over the horizon or when it's setting over the horizon. And in this case, I'm able to get it just as it's rising, just a little bit nicer because it's, you know, 10 30, 11 o'clock at night, as opposed to when it's setting, which will be um, much earlier in the morning. And we'll shift as time goes on. Now, a quick little reminder, don't just stop this video and say, okay, I can go and point out in between north and northeast, a 24 degree um, azimuth at 1030 in the morning, and I'm good. If you live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and you're shooting on the 14th, yes, you're good. But if you li live at a different altitude, if you're shooting on a, uh, sorry, a different latitude, if you're shooting on a different day, the data is not going to be the same. So make sure that you import this, you look at your location on the date you want to shoot and the time so that you have that exact information for yourself. Now, once I do this, I can take this information and bring it into the app that I personally like to plan with, which is Planet Pro. So I'm going to bring Planet Pro here and get rid of my face so I don't cover anything up. Inside of Planet Pro, I need to have uh, two things I like to have open. One, I like to have my constellation up. Now, if you had uh, looked in Solarian, you can turn on your constellations and you can see what's around it. It's just off of Boots. Boots is over to the northeast, and that's um, what's the closest right now um, to this particular comet. So I've gone in and selected Boots um, as my constellation. It will just give me a visual. You can see that yellow line that is coming um, to the northeast and moving in my frame. I'm going to um, take my green and put it over it. That line there, that is boots. So I know that I will be shooting generally in that direction. Now I have my constellation up, which is done. I should back up one moment, is done by using the um, stars and star trails here in your ephemeris features. The other thing you need to have open, if I go into my menu over here, under photography tools, make sure you have focal length open. So I'm going to try and shoot this comet at a focal length of 200 millimeters. So that's why I have this set to 200. Now, very important is my azimuth. So if we pop back in here into Solarium, my azimuth is 24 degrees when the comet is about one degree above the horizon. So in here, inside of Planet Pro, I'm going to come in and put in 24 degrees. And now that takes my little green um, like triangle icon that's showing me uh, the how my focal length looks. And if, if you've never used Planet Pro, let me just show you here. If I go to 35 millimeters, See how that green triangle got a lot bigger? It's because it's a wider field of view. So when I put the azimuth to be 24 degrees, my field of view is now pointed towards that 24 degree azimuth. That means this direction is the direction where the comet is rising. And the time it's rising is at, I have 1138. Um, so we're close, we're 11.28, let's go to 11.38 here. 11.38 um, p.m. This is really useful because now I can start to look and see, well, sometimes I like to shoot at this particular area. So there's um, the Swiss Air 111 Memorial site. Not gonna be great because I'm gonna be shooting back up towards hills. So in fact, if I want to kind of get ocean 
this whole area might not be great. This area would be okay, but there's not a lot on this side. Um, so maybe instead, I'm going to go, Nova Scotia is a peninsula, so I have lots of different shores that I can choose from. Maybe instead I want to come up here and look at um, shooting at Blomidon. So I want to come in and say, okay, I'm actually going to come down here to Blomidon as long as the tides work, <laughs> um, very high tides on this side of the province. Um, I can go here and I can be shooting towards, there's pretty much nothing over there, so not very much light pollution, and I can get a little bit of the foreground and it can look quite nice. So this lets me visually just like move around and be like, where is a good place? <laughs> like where, where are the places I go shooting? Let's go there and let's see what it looks like um, to photograph in that direction. Additionally, because I'm in Planet Pro, I can go in to the icon in the lower right hand corner. This has the four corners here and I can go into my virtual reality. And I really love using this virtual reality because it lets me see what I'm shooting. Now, right now it shows gray and you're like, oh, I can't see anything, Christine. You would be right. That's because if you look at our elevation angle, it's minus 7.2. So I am putting my finger in the middle of this screen and dragging down, you could also take this elevation angle and change it to a different number. You could put it at one or two, etc. Where I'm photographing near sea level, I don't need to be at a higher elevation um, in order to get my images. If you're shooting somewhere in mountainous ranges, you know, your elevation angle might have to be up at 10 or 14 degrees. If that's the case, you gotta come back here in Stellarium and then go until this gets up to say 10 or 14 degrees of course i've gone i've gone too far and see okay what is the azimuth then based on on your place but for us for what i'm looking at um to be at about one degree i am here at uh between 24 and 25 degrees as an azimuth so that works out perfectly so when i look here i can look at the landscape for this particular area and i see as I move over here, I do have that slope coming down, but when I'm at, you know, between 24.5 and 25 degrees, this would actually be a pretty interesting foreground, I think, in order to take my image. So now I'm able to go in and really plan very quickly and easily, where exactly am I going to take my photo? So I know where the object is rising in the sky, I know what time it is, and I can plan it out inside of Planet Pro. So this is my process for figuring out how to photograph comets. I hope it's been useful for you. Please let me know um, in the comments here if you have uh, gotten anything from this video, if you're gonna go out and photograph some comments. And of course, if you do get out, please tag me in the photos because I absolutely love to see the images that everyone takes out there. Okay, happy shooting everyone. I wish you clear nights and starry skies.